All right, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great day. We have officially hit the week of the MLB trade deadline and the Yankees, they're already making moves. Now, it wasn't a major move by any means, but that could be coming soon and we'll get to that at the very end. A, ru a rumor was just released, a pretty big rumor, a report actually, as I hit record on this video. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, but for now, let's get into the trade the Yankees just made. They acquired Clay Holmes from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. I know a lot of you guys are Hoy Jun Park obsessors. I'm not whatsoever. Not to call any of you guys out, but you really didn't know who the guy was a couple months ago. And now all of a sudden people are like salivating over him. Let me just tell you this. Most MLB scouts, at best, they project him to be a bench piece. And the Yankees, they never looked at him as anything special. And you can see, and I'm a fan of this trade, don't get me wrong, but you can see by the return the Yankees got for Hoy Jun Park that it's not just the Yankees that didn't think too highly of him. It's basically every organization in baseball because if that weren't the case, they would have gotten a much better return. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about when it comes to Hoy Jun Park. He wasn't going to get a chance to play in the Bronx, and the Yankees just got, um, they're able to address an area that they desperately need, needed to address um, by trading him. So let's get into it. So Clay Holmes, 28-year-old reliever. He was drafted by the Pirates in the ninth round of the 2011 MLB draft. Ooh, my hair's in the way. I, got, I know, I'm getting this cut, guys. I know you guys commented all the time. I'm probably getting a cut this week. Uh, but let's get into his stats. So there's honestly a lot of good, but also some bad. Um, so in 42 innings pitch, he's allowed 35 hits, which that is pretty solid. Um, now right off the bat, you see 4.93 ERA. Let me say this, guys. Do not look, at least for the most part, don't look at reliever ERA. It is so easily skewed by one, two, or three bad outings. Um, and we'll get into a, like a significant stat in a little bit, um, which kind of disputes that 4.93 ERA. But yeah, just try not to look at reliever ERA. And you do see the expected ERA is at 3.57, and in Sierra is at 3.77. So that's much more likely, much more like it better indicator of what's to come in the future or that he could probably have a better performance than at least at 4.93 ERA. 9.43 K per nine, that's pretty solid, but the main issue is that 5.36 walks per nine. So that's where the bat comes in. His main issue, and it's really an issue, is his control. That's what the Yankees are gonna have to hope they'll be able to fix. As for his arsenal, he throws a sinker majority of the time, and apparently it's a really damn good sinker. I have to admit, I haven't seen, I'll put highlights on the screen, but I myself haven't really watched this guy pitch all that much. Uh, but his sinker apparently touches like 99, and he throws that 51% of the time, slider 29% of the time, and curveball 19.8% of the time. He has thrown one four seam fastball this year. Um, now, here's part of the good that comes with him. So, he leads all of Major League Baseball this season with a 72.8% ground ball rate. Now, that is very impressive. Now, to put it into perspective for some context, um, Zach Britton, who we all know is like basically one of the greatest ground ball pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball, right? And his career ground ball percentage is like right, right around 66%. So that shows you how much of a ground, how good of a ground ball pitcher this guy is. So that is most certainly a plus. Now, here's a stat that I'm really fond of and kind of gets me a little bit excited. And one of the reasons why you shouldn't look at reliever ERA. So in 44 appearances, he didn't allow a run in 33 of them. That's Clay Holmes we're talking about. That's 75% of the time. And for reference, Lucas Lickey, is 26 for 36, meaning out of his 36 appearances, 26 of them he hasn't allowed a run, which is 72% of the time. And with Lickie, like we kind of look at him, he's been a pretty solid reliever this year for the most part. I mean, he's had some hiccups here and there, but if you think Lucas Lickie has been a pretty reliable reliever so far, well, if you go by this, Clay Holmes has been a pretty reliable reliever as well. So um, that's a pretty impressive stat right there. You know, and just once again, like don't look at reliever ERA because I mean, he could have one or two bad games and that totally skews it. You know, he could have gone from being like a 3.7 ERA pitcher to a five ERA pitcher just with two two bad games. You know, um, and at the last bullet I have control is the only issue in quotes because you know, when I say only, like that's a pretty big issue, a very big issue, which I want to flip to this tweet from um, Sung, Min, Sung Min Kim is his name. And, it's a pretty good take. Like I like the idea of what he's saying. Um, he says, a bit of a low-risk lottery ticket for the Yankees. Yankees tweak a thing or two with Holmes or just simply yell, your stuff is great. So just pound it right to the zone all the time and see if his production can match his stuff. If not, they only gave up two mid-tier MILB, infi MILB infielders. And once again, guys, let me just say, like, what the Yankees gave up is nothing to lose sleep over. Trust me. The upside of Holmes actually has me pretty excited. And regardless, he's a guy that can get us outs right now. And that is something that we really desperately need. I don't think I really need to explain myself when I say that. This team desperately needs relievers who can get outs. And from what I just showed you, Clay Holmes, he can get outs. Um, go to his baseball savant page. Look at his peripherals. They all look pretty good. Everything is in the red in the upper percentiles, especially his barrel percentage. That's really solid. 91st percentile. Um, really, the only thing he struggles with is that, that walk percentage. Ranks 10th percentile in walk percentage. His control is definitely going to be something the Yankees are going to have to address. And I figure with them trading for him, they probably do see something that they can they can fix or tweak. Um, so I'm actually feeling pretty good about this trade, not going to lie. Um, like I said, it really comes down to that we got a guy that hopefully is going to be able to get us outs. And we'll see what the Yankees can do with him. 
Um, one last thing before we get out of here, the piece of news that we got right before as I hit record, John Heyman, he put out a tweet that's kind of weirdly worded, but let's take a look. The Yankees made a trade offer for Trevor Story. So that right there, he, it, you know, props to John Heyman because he really could have just tweeted that out and that probably would have gotten like a lot more interaction if he just left it at that. Yankees made a trade offer for Trevor Story. That right there is interesting. Um, but then he follows it saying, no evidence of any traction there at this point. Rockies haven't definitely decided to trade him. They're going to trade him, let's be real. Um, though it would seem there's a good chance they do. So I mean, the Rockies, they're definitely going to trade Trevor Story. If they don't, I mean, that's that will make that organization even more laughable than it already is. So they're going to trade Trevor Story. And I got to say, it is quite satisfying to see the Yankees did make an offer for him. You know, I can't lie. Um, hopefully it gets they get it done. Now, I'm not a huge um, advocate for acquiring Trevor Story. I certainly wouldn't be against it. I'm more of a Joey Gallo type. But I will tell you this, um, even though the Yankees just got a reliever in Clay Holmes, and I'm a fan of that trade, they definitely need to address more pitching. I would say try to at least get a starter and maybe another reliever on top of that. So... I think they just really go hardcore shopping. Get a bat, whether that's Trevor Story or and Gallo, Joey Gallo. You should get one of them too, and then go out and get a starting pitcher and hopefully um, another reliever as well. So the Yankees definitely have some work to do, but make no mistake, they're only three and a half games out of a wild card spot. By no means, no means is this season over. And yeah, I guess that's all I got to say for this video. Let me know what you think about this trade. And also, you can also drop a comment. Do you want Trevor Story? Who else do you want? Who do you think the Yankees should go for this trade deadline? It's over on Friday. This year it ends on the 30th. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. I will see you guys next time. Let's go Yankees.